Hey, what's up? This is Dave from Revocation. I'm here at Revolver, and I'm going to be going down my list of 11 criminally underrated extreme metal bands in no particular order. Here we go. First up on my list is Abhorrent from Texas. This is a super brutal technical record. Uh, you know, if you like your death metal super heavy, but also like on the progressive side, definitely check them out. It's got Lyle Cooper on drums. He played in The Faceless. Their guitar player, Marlon Friday, he, he played in Absurdus, which is an insane grind band. They're just like a really musical, brutal death metal band. So definitely give them a listen. Kali Boss from Rochester, New York. This super heavy, gross, grimy grind. Like, I'm pretty sure there's like puke samples on one of their records, like in between songs. And like, I think a girl even says like, wh whatever like the clip is from, I think she's like, that is so gross. And then they kick right into one of their tracks. So yeah, I remember just being like, oh, this is just like disgusting, but I love it. They were one of the first like underground bands that I went to go see as a kid. I remember standing outside their show, they played O'Brien's in Boston, and I was handing out flyers for an upcoming gig that my band was playing. And yeah, they, they really like blew me away. Like I think they basically kind of like snuck us into the show. I, I, I had their pin, uh, don't take drugs, give them to Calibos for like years on my old leather jacket. They got Eric Burke in the band, who's just like a, a legend in the, in, the, in the metal scene. Their vocalist has one of the most brutal sounding voices I've ever heard. So super unique, it's like tons of aggression, but just super like guttural and gurgly at the same time. Yeah, they're just a, like a, a grimy, gross grind band that uh, I can't get enough of. Anata from Sweden. <laughs> Another incredible technical death metal band. They just have a really unique approach to writing riffs. There's lots of counterpoint happening, like multiple guitar counterpoint, bass counterpoint, uh, but it never loses the heaviness. It, it always is just super headbangable, and yeah, it just makes me want to like flip tables when I listen to them. Sometimes when bands are very technical, I'll, I'll kind of listen to it and be a little bit more like intellectual. With with the Nada, like they have that intellectual quality to it. But yeah, it's just like fucking ripping at the same time. So I love when a band can kind of combine that like counterpoint and you know sort of music theory nerd shit with like just pure aggression. Yeah, I mean under a stone with no inscription. It's just a riff fest. And then their uh, their last record, The Conductor's Departure, this came out years ago. That one is just like a, a masterclass on like epic death metal riffs. Like I don't know, just every single song like has an emotional quality to it but like keeps me on my toes. There's like tons of like twists and turns and surprises. They're one of those bands where like I listen to their riffs, I'm like, oh fuck did they come up with that? They had a record that was supposed to come out, I think on Earache, and it just was like lost to the sands of time. Anyone from Earache watching or Anata, you know, just, just send me the record. I won't share it, I won't leak it. I just wanna hear what you guys came up with. Cause I remember hearing like demos, like I think it was like on like MySpace. So I don't know what happened. I'm not pointing any fingers, but Give me the riffs. Bring the riffs. X Toll, Norway. Christian Death Thrash. You know, you don't you don't hear a lot of Christian death metal coming out of Norway, so uh, it, it was it was definitely threw me for a loop when I heard it as a kid, just like rocking out to like dudes screaming about the power of. Christ, uh, I don't know. It was, uh, it was like heavenly riffs, but but brutal at the same time. X Toll is a unique band because they've they've gone through some different stylistic changes uh, throughout their career. Undeceived to me, again, it's just like an epic technical death metal record. You can't tell by now. I enjoy technical death metal, but but it's it's epic. Again, lots of cool counterpoint. It's very melodic, kind of reminiscent of like the epicness that I feel when I'm listening to certain like at the gates. Riffs, it's really ear catching and, and and super unique. And then they put out a record called Synergy, which is like this like cracked out thrash record, like super insane riffs, like a lot of high register stuff. It's like super aggressive and definitely like, you know, you can you can bang your head to it. It's not like overly progressive for the sake of being progressive, but it really is some of the most unique thrash metal like I've ever heard. The fact that they could go from a super epic melodic technical death metal record to this crazy spider fingery 
unique off the wall thrash record just always really impressed me and I think is just you know a testament to their their abilities uh, on their instruments and their and their creativity as songwriters. Please tell me synergy is spelled how I think it's spelled. No, it's not. God damn it. It's not. Next up, visceral bleeding from Sweden. <laughs> You couldn't tell, another brutal death metal band. Visceral Bleeding, I feel like, hasn't gotten quite the attention they deserve. Uh, they put out a few records over the years. I got into them from their Rem Remnants of Deprivation record. Insane riffing, kind of reminds me of like a suffocation style, where it's just brutal and like unrelenting, but just tons of the spider finger riffs. They're one of those bands where like, I'm surprised more people kind of that are like really into like death metal don't know about them because they're just like hummingly heavy and unrelenting. You know, I could easily see them on tour with a band like Suffocation or something like that and just like fucking killing it. I'm sure they probably play like different death fests like over in Europe, but to my knowledge, I don't think they've ever toured uh, in the in the States before. So now I'm moving out of the realm of technical death metal and into the realm of technical black metal, and not just any technical black metal, anonymous technical black metal. Thanafaxath. Very little is known of this murky group. I mean, I know who they are, but I'm not telling. I remember hearing their Sacred White Noise record and it like blew my mind. It was just, it sounded like this like evil demonic alien playing guitar. Tons of vibes. You know, I, like I love my black metal to have some atmosphere and some, and some, some creepy, you know, ethereal vibes to it, and I feel like Thanafax have to bring that. There's just this this level of musicality there that is is really unique to Thanafax Seth, um, the songwriter, whoever he or she is. Again, I know who it is. I'm not gonna tell, or I can, you know, I'll say who it is, but you bleep it out. It's <laughs> see, you never know. I won't tell. Your secret's safe with me and, and me and you. Now, now, so we have to kill you now, though. Now that you know. Yeah, I would definitely recommend checking out Thanafaxath if you like your black metal chaotic and riffed out. It's gonna give you nightmares for sure. This is a wild card one right now. Sudoku from the, the farthest nether regions of the, the cosmos. <laughs> 70s prog grind, but from the future. I think that's how they, they build themselves. Well, it's a one-man band. Uh, the same dude plays in Parliamentary Sodomai, which is a crazy, super aggressive, politically charged grind band. But yeah, Sudoku, fucking off the wall, cosmic, like there's electronic elements. It's it's truly some of like the most like unhinged grind I've ever heard. Like some of the riffs are like kind of fun, honestly, and just kind of boisterous. But like then there's other parts that I'm like, okay, this shit's like literally like hurting my brain right now. I've played it for like musician friends of mine and it's like the response is like this like kind of weird like nervous laughter like what the it's what the fuck is going on. Again, it's unrelenting, you know, it has that grind feel. I like my grind to be chaotic. It just has this like wild card element that goes beyond chaos into just like outer space. Like aliens smoking crack, ripping insane riffs like in a spaceship somewhere out in the like, you know, on the event horizon of like a black hole or something. Staying with the grind theme, noisier. Again, super chaotic, insane, brutal, fast, pissed, aggressive. Subvert the dominant paradigm. That, that record was like, holy shit, just like a white knuckle hell ride. You just like strap in and listen to that thing and it will like fucking rip your face off. So yeah, if you want some like super aggro grind, definitely give that a spin. No, There's no frills with, with grind, right? You just gotta, sometimes it just is what it is. It's fucking pissed. What do you want me to say? Fucking listen to it. All right, going back to some heavy ass death metal, Cosmic Putrefaction. The horizons towards which splendor withers. A little bit of a mouthful right there, but I love a good excessively long title. Again, yeah, I think the title fits the mood of the band. Like we've got like the cosmic element. There's like these riffs that just sound like they're from outer space, but the putrefaction, very gross, grimy. It has kind of like an old school death metal aesthetic to it in terms of the production and, and, and the vocals. Like the vocals definitely have that like cavernous 
reverb on them in certain parts, and it just kind of adds to the overall vibe. It's definitely not super polished, which, which I really like. It feels very like organic. But that being said, you know, technically proficient as hell. Uh, and, and really creative on, on the riffing side. Dodecahedron from the Netherlands. Mind-blowing band. They're, they're unique. They've got like this cool blend of death metal, black metal. There's like noisy, experimental elements to it. But the riffs are razor sharp. The drumming's insane. I'm pretty sure the, the drummer is in like a, like a metal fusion band as well. Like some of like the fills he's doing like in between like the blasting, like have this like off the wall, like, you know, like jazz fusion kind of quality to them. Super interesting band. Uh, their their self-titled record that came out in 2012 really grabbed my ear. I love it when I discover a new band and like it can just be like one riff. It'll just like catch my ear and I'll like, like what the fuck is this? Where was this the mindset of the person that was writing this music? Like how do they even come up with it? So I love discovering bands like that. I think they'll catch your ear, especially if you've hung in this long through this list of extremity. Dodecahedron should definitely be on your list. If you like the shit I've talked about so far, I think you'll love Dodecahedron. Last, but certainly not least, on my list is Martyr. I'm a huge Dan Longgrain fanboy. I've given him multiple shout outs before, but I'm doing it again. Dan, I love you. I think you're a goddamn fucking musical genius. Incredible riffs. It sounds like if Stravinsky wrote death metal or something, there's there's insane counterpoint. The solos have like a jazz fusion meets metal kind of element, like really off the wall, but they fit perfectly at the same time. And every single member in that band is is a monster. I mean, the drumming's incredible, the bass playing's incredible. Obviously, the guitar work is nuts. They've they've put out three uh, studio records in addition to a live album. Check out the record Warp Zone. That was really what got me into that band as a kid. I remember getting their tab books and. Learning these riffs as a kid, it just like blew my mind, like the, the different combinations of like notes and time signature changes that they were coming up with. And it really, really inspired me to think outside of the box. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely indebted to, to Martyr and the musical genius of, of Dan Mongrain. I hope you guys enjoyed my list of 11 criminally underrated extreme metal bands. I'm obviously a huge metal nerd, so this was a fun list to compile. I hope you guys get to experience some, some new music and put some wacky shit on your radar that maybe you never heard of before. But, let me fucking start over again. Fuck, I lost my goddamn train of thought. Brought to you by Liquid Death. Ah, you know? Aggressive.